Hello, people of YouTube! Tis I back again to do yet another anime review. And no, it's been a while, but I'm finally reviewing the anime I've been promising to review for quite some time. The anime that I just finished. An anime that, in all intents and purposes, it's actually really unique in its own way. And it's an anime that I've almost have never seen before. An anime probably has nothing to, like, do with anything. But it has like a really nice theme to it and it really is a really unique kind of anime. The anime we are going to review today is none other than Shimonetta. So the story of Shimonetta basically is, is that basically in this world of Japan, uh, basically dirty jokes do not exist. If you are caught telling a dirty joke or caught you know, doing something pretty much indecent in a way, the military and fucking police would come out with like guns and shit and arrest you on the spot. It was basically to boost morality rates and to basically, in this world, you know, not have anyone become a pervert. Well, in this world of Shimonetta, you follow uh, Okuma Tanokichi as basically he is thrown into this world and um, you find out that there's this terrorist organization called Sox that recruits Okuma and who just wants, and Okuma just wants to live this normal, decent life. He's basically thrust into this life by the student council vice president named Kajo to the world of an erotic terrorist. And basically their job is to bring back their dirty jokes and pornography and what have you. And basically you follow this organization as they rise up and they have their falls and then tell dirty jokes and shit like that. This anime is very hard to explain, but very interesting at that. So guys, I have never heard of Shimonetta in my entire life, okay? I mean, sure, you know, I haven't, I mean, I've heard of it at time to time. I just knew that it was just this very over-the-top comedy. And, um, I, I wanted to check it out. Yeah, the Black Critic guy said it was okay. So, I mean, why not? I'm gonna watch this anime. So, I did. And, guys, even though it was, like, 12 episodes long, I felt like these were, like, the longest 12 episodes of my fucking life. Because it took me forever to finish this anime. And we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> but all in all, guys, what do I think about Shimonetta? I think Shimonetta is fairly average. It's average, okay? I mean, it, 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 there's nothing meh to it. it. It's an average anime. What I mean by that is, of course, where we always start first. It's animation. It's animation done by... It's done... done blah, blah, it's done by J.C. Staff. The same guys who made Don Machi, a.k.a. Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? And uh, Prison School. I haven't seen Prison School yet, but I will eventually because I do want to watch that anime. I hear it's actually pretty fucking funny. So, the animation done by J.C. Staff is fairly decent. It's nothing very new. I, I want to say it's new, but it's, not, it's, it's fairly average. It's decent animation, okay? They've done better animations in the past. Look at Don Machi, for example. The comedy. The comedy in the anime is actually fairly funny. And I find myself pretty much laughing th throughout the anime because it's actually pretty fucking funny throughout it, the anime. I find it to be very funny. The story. The story is actually very unique. And because not a lot of animes touch upon the, stu the subject of dirty jokes slash safe sex slash um, basically sex in general. You, you barely never see an anime touch upon this subject, and I find that very fascinating and very unique. And plus, the story also is very over the top and very bombastic, very preposterous, and it's actually very good. And it's very unique in its very own way. Sure, in some ways it's very decent, but the story is fantastically different from all of the other animes I've seen so far. So good job on its story development. Nextly, it's theme. The theme of safe sex. That right there, again, has never been touched upon. Basically going hand in hand with the story. You've almost never seen an anime touch upon the subject of safe sex, what it's like to have safe sex, and, that, and to teach our kids about sex. That's, that's barely shown in anime and barely in society in general because we see as sex as very, um, you know, 
deliberate and very erotic and you know it's nothing really i mean i get it what happens in the bedroom stays in the bedroom but it, it it's fine and to teach our kind of kids that you know what it's like to actually teach a world without safe sex and I actually like that, okay? Not a lot of animes, like I said, touch upon this subject. And I very fine and I give praise to this anime for giving such a good subject and such a great theme in general. Nextly and lastly that I liked about this anime were most of its characters. Hence the word most. Most of the characters in the anime I found very unique and very funny, especially our main protagonist, Okuma. I did like his character. He see, I get it. He's like, um, you know, rom com cliche number nine, black critic guy standard. I mean, yeah, sure, he's bland, he's generic, but he actually gets some cool ass development, especially for our main character because you don't really see the main character in anime, you know, get that much development. He's just more or less, you know, kind of like the side character. Even though he's the main character, all the focus goes to the side characters in the anime, and he doesn't get any of attention, but. For what we got of development from Tanaki, he's actually very unique, and I did like his character for the most part, and hell, you actually kind of understand why he doesn't like dirty jokes to begin with. I find that to be very fascinating. So, good job for actually developing a main character anime. Good job. Next, we have the over-the-top leader of socks herself, Kajo-senpai. I liked her. She's very funny. She's very bombastic. She's very perverted. And I liked her character at that. She's very over the top. She's very crazy. And I liked her character because of that. And I do have an issue with this character, which we'll get into in a little bit. But let's just say it involves kind of her personality. Even though I love over the top characters in general, hers kind of, you know, cross between the lines. We'll get into that in a little bit. Also, I did like one of the characters, her name is Fua. Even though she's barely given any screen time in the anime, but for what she got, she did make the most of it, and I did like her character as much. Also, one other thing I have to give praise to this anime was its Japanese voice acting. Even though I don't really give praise to Japanese voice acting, I do give praise to this anime because I find the Japanese voice acting to be very funny and very... Um, and the voice and the voice actors did a very good job at portraying their characters, especially the voice actress who did Kaijo Senpai. That laugh of her, man. <laughs> no, no, no one can copy that voice. No one can copy that laugh. She's very awesome. I like the voice acting in this anime. So, people of YouTube, even though I, I am stating pretty good things about this anime, don't get me wrong. There are some pretty bad things about this anime as well, and that really turned me off from this anime in general. The biggest problem with this anime particulates to the second half of the anime. The second half of the anime is very unbearable to watch, people of YouTube. I'm not gonna lie. Ugh. I did not like the second half of this anime. I felt like, it, it, like the first half of the anime had this very unique story with this very unique theme and it's very over the top and very funny. But the second half of the anime kind of throws away that theme in general and that it just gives us this kind of stereotypical almost action story that you see in, in any, every, every other shonen anime. And I don't like that. The second half is very boring. It's very not funny. And it also, remember when I said it crossed the line between... Uh, when, I, when I mentioned Kaja, remember when I said it, she crossed the line? In the second half, she crossed the line because her perverted nature gets the best of her. And I just did not like that. I just... No. Also, you can also see this as a nitpick. But the Japanese voice acting, even though I just gave it praise... I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I mean, this anime really needs to benefit from an English dub. Because if this anime did have an English dub, I probably would have had a better experience. Because as I was trying to follow the second half, I couldn't follow it because the Japanese voice acting was like so unappealing and the subtitles kind of didn't make any sense in general. And I just could not get it. I'm sorry. I just couldn't get the Japanese language, so I couldn't really enjoy this anime in general. <sighs> The rest of the characters. Okay, remember when I... Okay, uh, besides Kajo Senpai and that little fucking issue I have with her, there's some other characters I have to mention. Particularly this one character, which I have to mention. I, I have to. I fucking have to. Anna. Anna Senpai. 
By the way, if you don't get this, this is the Dashi reference. Anna. I'm not gonna reveal what this girl has done to really make me almost vomit in my mouth. Like, yo, this girl almost made me throw up my mouth. Let's just say her fetish is by far the weirdest one I've ever seen in, in like in general. Like I've never seen a fetish quite weirder than this hers. Not to mention her obsession with Okuma and I don't want to talk about this character. No. No, 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 no. Anna. What the fuck were they thinking with her? Oh my lord. What were they thinking with this character? She's very... I can't reveal it. I can't reveal it. If you guys want to see this character... If, if you guys want to see this anime... I can't reveal too much about Anna. Because she is fucking weird. One of the weirdest anime characters I've ever seen ever. And lastly, one of my final and biggest issues with this anime involves with its main antagonist. We're not really main antagonist, he's just an antagonist. He's forgettable. He's annoying. Fucking forgettable. One of the laziest, forgettable, and piss poor main antagonists I have ever seen in anime history. He is without a doubt the creepiest, without a doubt the weirdest, without a doubt fucking ridiculous. And I get it. That's what they were going for. This is a really ridiculous, over-the-top comedy. But come on, man. No. His motives don't make any sense. And his... Just, no. No. Fuck that. Hell no. Fuck that shit, man. Ugh. All in all, guys. This anime is not that bad. It's barely average. That's why I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. It's average. Don't expect too much about this anime. Besides its unique, fascinating story with a great theme and decent animation and okay characters. This anime is just decent. You're, like, Am I going to hate you for not watching this anime? Absolutely not. But this anime is just fairly all average. And in anime, um, I would only watch when I'm bored. There you go. So that's my theory. That's my review. Theory? What the fuck? That's my review for Shimonetta. And I'm sorry this anime review took way too long than expected. I wanted to review it last week, but some stuff occurred and I had to focus on that. And plus my lazy, I'm fucking lazy as hell. Don't worry. And also, I hope to review JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 2012. I'm not going to review Stardust Crusaders or the newer one, but I will review just the 2012 edition. Okay? Okay. So... That being said, people of YouTube, uh, that's going to wrap this video up. Until then, people of YouTube, I will be back eventually with the next my next anime review. So, peace. Bye. Holy shit. I think this is hands down one of my worst reviews ever, video-wise. Eh, who cares?